Hello and welcome back to this channel. Dear students, this session is for revision of special purpose motors. Actually, it is unit number 6 from the subject uh, electric, electrical circuits for second year ENTC students. This is the smaller unit compared to the other units. So, only limited portion is there. Without wasting the time, let us start the session. First part is brushless DC, that is BLDC motors. In the earlier uh, case, like in case of DC motors or induction motors, we discussed that uh, mechanical components are required. For example, brushes are required, then commutators are required. These things are required to transfer uh, energy uh, to the corresponding motor. In this case, everything, I mean, brushes and commutators are not at all used. Rather, electronic system is used, electronic switching system is used, which is designed by using transistors or thyristors. Consider the diagram, this is the simple diagram of a BLDC motor. It consists of a permanent magnet rotor. I have shown different windings, I have shown four windings in this case. Now, different switches are shown, S1, S2, S3 and S4. All the controlling action, every signal is passed by switching on or switching off a corresponding switch. For example, initially, suppose uh, this field winding one is energized. That means certain signal is applied uh, using transistors or using thyristors. Uh, then this rotor will try to align itself along field winding one. Then suppose I will switch off this field winding one and switch on field winding two. Then once this is switched on, uh, this is switched off and field winding two is switched on, rotor will rot uh, rotate and it tries to align along with field winding two. Likewise, if you switch off this and switch on field winding three, rotor will again rotate itself and tries to align, align along uh, field winding uh, corresponding to switch S3 and so on. Likewise, the rotation of rotor takes place. So the operation is pretty simple this is for the brushless BLDC motors. What are the applications of these motors? There are n number of applications like in medical field for uh, diagnosis purposes and so on. Uh, then in case of satellites, in case of aeroplanes. So there are n number of applications as far as these BLDC motors are concerned. Next part is stepper motor. It is basically single stack variable reluctance stepper motor. This is the diagram of uh, a particular stepper motor. It consists of, this, this operation is pretty simple, it consists of a stator core, this outer side and this one uh, which I have drawn with the red color pen, it is the rotor core. I have shown a different number of teeth, for example, for rotor I have shown 4 teeth, for stator I have shown 6 teeth. I have given different names like A, B, C and so on for uh, windings, there are different windings on the uh, stator core on each uh, stator. Three switches are used. In this diagram, I have shown the mechanical switches, but in practical cases, these are not mechanical switches. These are rather electronic switches uh, designed using transistors or thyristors and this uh, supply voltage is let us say V. Initially, assume that we will close switch A so that this rotor, this coil uh, corresponding to uh, stator teeth A will be energized and this rotor tries to align along this A, along the segment A. Suppose I will, uh, I have, what I said, I have switched on switch A like this. Switch B and switch C are swift, switched off. Then in that case, this winding, rotor winding tries to align along uh, teeth A. Now suppose I will keep switch A on itself and I will switch on this switch B. In that case, both switches A and B are on. But since the switch B is just now uh, switched on, it will try to develop the flux and this rotor will try to align, will try to rotate corresponding to the energy which is applied to teeth B. Now after some time, let us say I will switch off switch A and only B is switched on. Then in that case, this uh, rotor will be completely aligned along this switch B as shown in this diagram. So it shows the rotation of the rotor in anticlockwise direction and since there are six teeth corresponding to the stator winding, it shows rotation by an angle 30 degree. Then I will change the switching, I will switch off this and I will switch on C and so on. Likewise, you can rotate this rotor 
every time the rotor in this case because of 6 teeth it shows the rotation by an angle 30 degree if I, if I will change the sequence if I will interchange the sequence like initially I switched on A and then B instead of that if after switching on A I will switch on C then it will show rotation in clockwise direction and so on this is the simplest working of a stepper motor the next part is permanent magnet stepper motor. This is another type of stepper motor. As the name indicates, it consists of a permanent magnet. This is the permanent magnet having two poles, north and south pole. It is in the form of cylindrical rotor. This is actually cylindrical in nature. Now I have shown different uh, stator windings. This is called as a stator pole, this type of section. I mean, this type of section. This is a stator pole. On each stator pole, uh, different windings are shown. These windings are actually marked as uh, A1, A1 dash, similarly B1, B1 dash and A2, A2 dash, B2, B2 dash. The operation is pretty simple. In this case, uh, the rotation of this rotor depends on the uh, energizing sequence. Suppose I will first energize the coil A1 and A1 dash. Then in that case, this rotor will tries to align itself in such a way that north pole will be along A1 and south pole will be along A1 dash which I have already shown in this diagram. Accordingly, if you go on changing the energizing sequence, then rotation of rotor takes place each time by say 90 degree depending on the uh, sequence of energy that you are providing. Actually, this sequence of energy or, or sequence of the windings is provided using the microcontroller. So, biggest advantage of this type of uh, stepper motor is that there is, there is no requirement of external source. The next part is block diagram of electric vehicles. Actually, it is very simple. You can write the explanation on your own. Still, I will explain in brief. Uh, everyone knows that nowadays, uh, there is a huge demand as far as electric vehicles are concerned. This is the block diagram. First block is the charger. We know that we are you going to use the battery. So to charge the battery, charger is required. Usually there are two types of batteries. One, <coughs> one is lithium battery and second is lead acid battery. In case of lithium battery, the voltage rating is 3.7 volt uh, for lithium battery and uh, for lead acid battery, it is 12 volt. But do remember uh, students, uh, battery is not the only option. Uh, there are other options also like super capacitors, but they are still under research. Presently we are talking about the battery. Then power converters are used as the name indicates to make the conversion of power. Then this output is given to the electric motor. The main function of electric motor is to convert the electrical energy into the mechanical motion and accordingly shaft and wheels are used. Uh, depending on the requirement or depending on the type of vehicle like if it is two wheeler three wheeler or four wheeler depending on that a particular motor electric motor is uh, uh, selected usually bldc motor is preferred because it is having uh, um, compared to other motors it is having uh, less losses and torque is more uh, nowadays also BLDC motors are used for wipers and any other applications as far as the car accessories are concerned. So this is the simplest block diagram of electrical vehicles. Now the last part of this unit is controllers used in electric vehicles. This is again a pretty simple part. Uh, I have shown the block diagram of these controllers. This is the accelerator paddle. The driver has to press this accelerator paddle. When potentiometer is used, we know that potentiometer is basically a variable resistance. DC controller controls all the operations. Uh, to this battery and charger are connected. DC controller takes the signals from the battery and accordingly it generates the corresponding signal which drives the DC motor and output of DC motor, I mean this output is connected it is written motor shaft is connected with tire axle accordingly the speed of electric vehicle is controlled how it uh, operates whenever the driver is not pressing this accelerator paddle that means there is zero input so accordingly potentiometer gives the corresponding signal to the dc controller dc controller is the major blocks which takes the decision and it decides since the accelerator is not placed so according to the output of pot potentiometer, it takes the decision and it will not give any signal, uh, any power to the DC motor. So motor stops rotating 
uh, stops moving as if it was earlier rotating and the car will be electric vehicle will be at standstill position if the driver presses uh, this accelerator pad by some amount accordingly potentiometer signal is generated dc controller takes the decision and corresponding signal is given to the dc motor which starts rotating and it is connected with the tire axle accordingly the speed of electric vehicle is decided so dear students that's it for this unit this is the uh, simplest unit uh, in our syllabus so thank you thanks a lot for watching this video